Last week, we left Morea and sailed our little floating home into the dreamy harbor of Tahiti. Our visit here was a bit different than most. Instead of relaxing at one of the all-inclusive resorts, we spent the week getting our boat ready for our next adventure. And with one life full of food and fuel, we are ready to see a bit of Tahiti before sailing on. really early here in Papete this morning. I think it's like 6.30 and we're just meeting up with our friends, Kristen and Fabio, and we're gonna head over to the market. It's Sunday and apparently the Sunday morning market is the best time to go. We have no idea what to expect, but we're gonna go check it out. Located in the heart of Papete is this vibrant and bustling marketplace. As we stepped inside, we were greeted by a kaleidoscope of colors and an aroma of freshly cut flowers. We quickly realized the market is not just for tourists to browse around looking at handicrafts, but instead a place where locals come to buy, sell, and trade food and produce for the week ahead. Yeah, thank you. I just bought two yummy pastries for 300 francs, which is about almost $3 in the US. So we're here at the Papayate Market on Sunday morning, and this is the big day at the market. It is filled with produce, fish, pastries, cooked meat, everything you can imagine here at the market, and it is really busy. We actually just bought some fresh squeezed sugarcane juice, and it's got a little bit of fruit mixed into it, and it's absolutely delicious. Despite the early morning hour, the market was alive with activity. It was almost as if the whole town woke up early to be here. So as we've been walking around, we've been looking at the prices of like vegetables and things. And the cost of food here is just, to us, we believe it's pretty high. And even at a local market, for three small pineapples, it's $15. Uh, we've been outside of the US for a while, but we still think that's probably more than US prices. Not sure. Uh, for like five tomatoes, it's like $1.25 a tomato. Seems a bit pricey. We thought maybe the prices here in the market would be cheaper, but cheaper than I care for, but it doesn't seem to be that way. While we expected to see more affordable fruit and veggies since we were buying straight from the grower, we were reminded of the realities of island life and the challenges that the locals face being in a remote location. I'm glad we got up early to come see this. Apparently everything shuts down here by like 9 a.m., which makes sense because I bet they do this before they go to church. I'm making that up, I have no idea. As we've been sailing around the world for the past four years, we've seen just how important our waterways are. Humans are connected through our lakes, rivers, and oceans more than any other way. We witnessed firsthand the struggles that some communities have to access fresh drinking water. During this year's World Water Day, we've partnered with our friends at Epic Water Filters. You've seen us use our bottles during our travels for the last few years. But not only do they provide us with clean drinking water, they also support some really incredible nonprofit organizations. Global Access 2030 is committed to providing clean, safe drinking water to the entire world by the year 2030. American Rivers conserves our waters by protecting and restoring our rivers. And the Inland Ocean Coalition bridges the gap between inland communities and ocean conservation. There is also our own Sailing One Life water bottle, which helps us continue our travels and clean up beaches and oceans along the way. Each of these bottles has its own really unique design, but the best part is it comes with a filter that allows you to fill the bottle from any freshwater source and not have to worry about any contaminants. By using these water bottles, you're not just ensuring clean drinking water for yourself, but you're helping all of these organizations protect our planet 
and make sure that people around the world have access to safe, clean drinking water. From March 21st through March 25th, if you select the buy with Prime option, not only do you get fast free delivery, but you also automatically get 25% off your order. Thanks guys, now back to the video. When we got back to One Life, it was still quite early in the day, and since it was clear and calm outside, we decided to take advantage of the weather. We've had lots of fun dive buddies here in French Polynesia, but today it was just the two of us. This dive site was a bit different than the ones we had previously done in French Polynesia. Instead of focusing on the coral and fish, we were on the lookout for a couple wrecks. As soon as we descended down the mooring line, we spotted it the remnants of an old wooden schooner. This schooner was once an old warship minesweeper and was sunk intentionally here in 1976 to make an artificial dive site. Although the wooden deck has since disappeared, we could see many parts and pieces still intact. This wreck sits at about 70 feet at the deepest part and is now home to a diverse mixture of fish, coral, and moray eels. Just a few hundred feet from the schooner was another intentionally scuppered dive site, a Catalina seaplane sunk in 1962. The seaplane was much more intact than we expected, with many openings and swim-throughs. And of course, Gary could not resist hopping in the pilot seat. It is believed this plane was used during World War II to fly supplies between Tahiti and Bora Bora. After we took our obligatory scuba selfies, we were able to capture this cool time lapse of an eel hiding out in the coral. For almost an hour of being underwater, we headed up to the surface. When we got back from the market, we decided to go on a little scuba dive and right outside the anchorage here is a sunken seaplane, a Catalina seaplane, and also a wooden schooner. And it's only about a half a mile dinghy right away. So we loaded up our gear and went out there to find it. Uh, the visibility wasn't great, but seeing the wooden schooner was really cool. You could see one prop and the engine compartment and a whole bunch of like the piping. I'm not sure exactly what it's called. Gary knows better than I do. And then the seaplane was super cool. Gary was actually able to go inside. But anyway, that was our Sunday fun day. We woke up to glassy flat conditions and slack tide, a signal for us to get moving again. Our destination, Morea, was visible across the flat water to the west. The passes into the lagoon in Tahiti can be quite treacherous for us sailors, but the large swell crashing over the reef creates an ideal playground for brave surfers. Tahiti boasts some of the world's most renowned and challenging surf breaks, which barrel directly over the shallow reef. As we carefully navigated out between the breaks, the surfers put on quite a show for us. We 
left Tahiti this morning to head back to Morea. It's only about a 10 mile sail. Unfortunately, there's no wind today, so we're just motoring. But we've heard there's whales in the area. It's actually whale season here. So I'm just up here out front chilling in the bean bag, scanning the surface, hoping we see something. It's really calm out. So if there are whales, we should be able to spot them, I would think. So we spent about a week in Tahiti. Most of our time was spent doing chores and maintenance on One Life, uh, but we did get to squeeze in a scuba dive and a fun road trip on land with some of our friends. Uh, Tahiti wasn't our favorite. It's okay, but it's pretty busy. Um, the anchorage is really busy. There's lots of boats, which is fine. But all in all, we think Tahiti is like really well branded and good for resorts and resort life. Uh, and just okay for life on a salvo. The anchorages there are like four miles from the closest dinghy dock. So it's kind of tough getting from the boat to land. And everything's really spread apart. So once you're in town, uh, you either have to grab a taxi or walk pretty far. So not ideal. There is, uh, there are two marinas there but you cannot make a reservation. It's first come, first serve. So ideally you would get a slip for a couple days and enjoy land, but you have to kind of like wait and see if someone leaves and then sneak in behind them. And it's just a really busy area. So we opted not to do that because it's, I don't know, it's not, it's not any fun trying to beat someone to a slip at first thing in the morning, in our opinion. But we're excited to get back to Morea, do maybe a couple more dives and possibly a hike before we continue on our journey west. Beautiful day for whale watching, huh? Not exactly. <laughs> Just go watch our friends' videos if you want to see clear water and sunny skies and whales jumping because we get cloudy and rain. This Sometimes is us. This is what you get. This is, yeah, you never know what you'll get. Some days you get lucky, some days you don't. Well, we were in Tahiti getting one life ready for the coming months. Our friends had moved on to Morea and had some amazing whale experiences. But by the time we arrived, the weather was just not cooperating. Yes, we were quite jealous. Aside from hoping to see the whales, there was another reason we stopped back in Morea, to say our see you laters to our friends. Our paths were diverging. While they planned to stay in French Polynesia for another season, we would be continuing on the next leg of our journey, sailing west. Another reason we were jealous of our friends was because they were granted long stay visas due to their citizenship, but we only had 90 days and our time here was rapidly ending. The next day, the sun was shining bright and since we had an overnight sail ahead, we needed some exercise. So we gathered the crew and headed off on one more hike together. While the drone captured the gorgeous backdrop of Morea, we were busy laughing and talking, making yet another amazing memory with our friends. French Polynesia is truly a magical place, and this was a bittersweet time for us. But finally, it was time for us to say goodbye. It's hard to articulate the reality of constantly making friends, sharing so many special times together in a such amazing places, and then parting ways. But such is the nature of our chosen nomadic lifestyle. 
But as we sail onward, we are fortunate to carry these incredible times with us and know one day, somewhere, far away from where we are right now, we will share an anchorage once again. After a quick overnight sail, we arrived at the charming little island of Huahine, and we immediately spotted humpback whales. It's on. Oh, shit, look at that. Yeah. Where did it go? Oh, sorry, it's in front of us. Or there's yeah. another one. See, it just came up. <laughs> Finn! Oh, no way. Wow. It was as if nature was telling us that everything would be all right, and we were exactly where we were meant to be at that moment. The next day, without skipping a beat, we headed out to the nearby reef for a dive. We were immediately greeted with colorful fish in clear, clear water. With each dive we do, we experience a different sort of magic lying just below the surface. As we followed the coral wall, the water became a little murky, but it didn't matter to us. There is something about being underwater that provides a sanctuary where our worries fade away and only the present moment matters. On our way back to the dinghy, we happened upon this octopus. He was quite shy, so we just left the camera wedged in some rocks and swam away for a moment. This is what we captured. It's a pretty fascinating world under here, isn't it? As we headed back to One Life for the evening, we were greeted once again with Mother Nature's beauty, a good sign for things to come. scooter today and uh, it's forecast to be sunny and clear and it's been pouring rain for the past hour so we've not even been able to film anything it actually looks really beautiful we're on the island of Huahine but yeah cloud cover rain not ideal for filming Once we accepted we were going to be drenched all day, we headed around the islands for a fun day of scootering. Huahine is part of the Society Islands and only has a population of around 6,000 people. It's an island with little tourism and a place we would have loved to spend more time But there are five islands that make up the Society Island Archipelago, and we had two more to check off our list before we checked out of French Polynesia. Mm -hmm. 
As the ferry from Tahiti arrived the following day, we made our way out of the anchorage. We're just doing a little day sail today from Huahine to Raiatea. And it's a bit sportier out here than we were anticipating. Uh, we thought it'd be a, just a really nice chill downwind day sail with uh, smooth seas, but it's a bit kicked up. But the good news is we're going pretty fast. We're doing seven knots and we only have like 10 miles. So be nice. Nice sail. When we arrived into Raiatea, we were immediately taken back by yet another gorgeous landscape. We anchored in the shallow turquoise sandy water with the lush green mountains surrounding us and an absolutely magnificent underwater world that we just can't get enough of. And with that, we'll leave you right here with this. Thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you next time as we explore the exotic Bora Bora.